Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about something that may appear negative, but in hindsight, it isn't negative, and you'll understand what I mean later. I love Google and I love Apple, and those are the two companies I follow, and I pretty much am a fanboy of those two. And one of the things I am not afraid to do is I'm not afraid to criticize Google to its face or Apple to its face. So Google's flying me off to Dublin, Ireland for a few days to hang out, talk, meet some other people. And the last time I did that was in Austin. Had a really wonderful time in Austin. Austin's always really fun. I have been to Googleplex. There's one in New York. I don't think that's called Googleplex, but it's a Google building in New York. And there's one in California, obviously in Mountain View. So I loved it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But because I love it so much, I'm willing to criticize it. And companies that grow and are very strong, they accept the criticism and they try to validate it. So this is one of my biggest criticisms for Magic the Gathering. It's very simple. The people they are presenting as the commentators and they're not pro Magic players. They are not uh, or they're not recent pro Magic players. I think Tom Martell, PSV, LSV, uh, Brian Kibler, they've all want to do commentary. They would rather do commentary than play. And it's because commentary is something that is a professional, it's something that you can grow and get really good at. And after your playing days are over, you know, a lot of NFL and a lot of baseball players go into commentary. If you are a younger generation, and why is the younger generation so important in this scenario is because Magic cannot grow without younger people. Uh, without the Minecraft audience, without the Call of Duty audience, without the League of Legends audience, and without the Hearthstone audience, this game does not grow. Simply put, I mean, I've heard that there's 12 to 15 million players. I find that I'm skeptical of that amount number, but if it actually grows beyond that, it needs a pool outside of the one it currently has. So when let's imagine a younger player and they are, are they are you know watching a video from you know they jump from a Minecraft channel to this Magic channel and they see two men in their forties and they are just in, interest they are so disinterested in whatever's going on they just flip the channel. And this happens probably more often than you believe. And I would love to look at the analytics of the stream data because people, you know, watch just random stuff, just like they do on TV, it's just like they do on YouTube. And there's many opportunities for Magic to capture these people who are kind of flipping channels, if you will. But the production value is so bad. The production value from, you know, the, the quality of even the video stream to the you know, actual reason to watch. I mean, it's to the understanding, to the fact that the commentators have a limited understanding of the actual game of Magic is really bad. Again, you have these Magic pros, Tom Martell, um, Brian Kibler, LSV, who want to do commentary, and they would be excellent. Uh, Reed Duke, they would be excellent at commentary, and they would provide this game so much more value than they currently are, and they want to do it. And they want to get good at it because it's a profession, right? It's something that you can, uh, magic is hit or miss really because you, it, it's not, you cannot make money from magic, but you could make money from being an announcer or being a giving commentary. So here we go with um, the scenario that it's just not attractive to younger audience members. Um, it's not interactive. It's the cards are so small that it's, you, you can't even read the cards. You know? And you might say, oh, MTG Lion, why are you pointing out all these mistakes of Magic? We should all just love Magic and we should just take it for what it is. That's what happened with Magic Online. Magic Online, from a developmental standpoint, is a bunch of coders who coded a program way, way back when. And if you understand development, new developers hate using old developers' code. And therefore, old developers are always trying to ingrain themselves into the code. They make things complicated. There's no notes. The comments are not in the correct places, if there are comments at all. So when you hire a new developer into Magic Online, they have no idea what's going on because the code is so different. I bet you the code looks like it's from 15 years ago because it probably is from 15 years ago. You don't have new blood. You don't have innovation. You don't have competition. If you don't have competition then 
there's no reason for you to make Magic Online better. There's no reason for you to get two better commentary uh, voices, and there's no reason for you to continue. It's just that simple. And if you don't view your competition as competition, like the epic statement that Hearthstone is not our competitors, that's even worse. That's even worse. Because I guarantee you Hearthstone views Magic as a competitor.